Savitri. Book 10 The Book of the Double Twilight Canto 4 The Dream Twilight of the Earthly Real Page 646, Fourth Line Mind is a tissue woven of light and shade where right and wrong have soon their mingled paths or mind is nature's marriage of conveyance between truth and falsehood between joy and pain this struggling pair no court can separate each thought is a gold coin with bright alloy and error and truth are its obverse and reverse this is the imperial mintage of the brain, and of this kind is all its currency. Think not to plant on earth the living truth, or make of matter's world the home of God. Truth comes not there, but only the thought of truth. God is not there, but only the name of God. If self there is, it is bodiless and unborn. It is no one, and it is possessed by none. On what shall thou then build thy happy world? Cast off thy life and mind, then art thou self, and all-seeing omnipresence stark alone if god there is he cares not for the world all things he sees with calm indifferent gaze he has doomed all hearts to sorrow and desire he has bound all life with his implacable laws he answers not the ignorant voice of prayer Eternal, while the ages toil beneath, unmoved, untouched by aught that he has made, he sees as minute details, mid the stars, the animal's agony and the fate of man. Immeasurably wise, he exceeds thy thought, his solitary joy needs not thy love. His truth in human thinking cannot dwell. If thou desirest truth, then still thy mind forever slain by the dumb unseen light. Immortal bliss lives not in human air. How shall the mighty mother her calm delight keep fragrant in this narrow fragile was? Or launch her sweet unbroken ecstasy in hearts which earthly sorrow can assail and bodies careless death can slay at will dream not to change the world that god has planned strive not to alter his eternal law if heavens there are whose gates are shut to grief there seek the joy thou couldst not find on earth, or in the imperishable hemisphere, where light is native and delight is king, and spirit is the deathless ground of things. Choose thy station, child of eternity. If thou art spirit and nature is thy robe, Cast off thy garb and be thy naked self, immutable in its undying truth, alone, forever in the mute alone. Turn then to God, for him leave all behind, forgetting love, forgetting Satyavan, annul thyself in his immobile peace, O soul, drown in his still beatitude, for thou must die to thyself to reach God's height. I, death, am the gate of immortality. But Savitri answered to the sophist God, 
Once more will thou call light to blind truth's eyes, make knowledge a catch of the snare of ignorance, and the word a dart to slay my living soul. Offer, O King, thy boons to tired spirits and hearts that could not bear the wounds of time. Let those who were tied to body and to mind tear off those bonds and flee into white calm, crying for a refuge from the play of God. Surely thy boons are great, since thou art he. But how shall I seek rest in endless peace, who house the mighty mother's violent force, his vision turned to read the enigma world. Her will tempered in the blaze of wisdom's sun and the flaming silence of her heart of love. The world is a spiritual paradox invented by a need in the unseen, a poor translation to the creature's sense of that which forever exceeds idea and speech a symbol of what can never be symbolized, a language mispronounced, misspelled, yet true. Its powers have come from the eternal heights and plunged into the inconscient dim abyss and risen from it to do their marvelous work. The soul is a figure of the unmanifest, the mind labors to think the unthinkable, the life to call the immortal into birth, the body to enshrine the illimitable. The world is not cut off from truth and God. In vain, thou hast dug the dark, unbridgeable gulf. In vain, thou hast built the blind and doorless wall. Man's soul crosses through thee to paradise, heaven's sun, forces its way through death and night. Its light is seen upon our being's verge. My mind is a torch lit from the eternal sun. My life a breath drawn by the immortal guest. My mortal body is the eternal's house. Already the torch becomes the undying ray. Already the life is the immortal's force. The house grows of the household path and one. How says though truth can never light the human mind, and bliss can never invade the mortal's heart, or God descend into the world he made? If in the meaningless void creation rose, if from a bodiless force matter was born, if life could climb in the unconscious tree, its green delight, break into emerald leaves and its laughter of beauty blossom in the flower, if sense could wake in tissue, nerve and cell, and thought seize the grey matter of the brain, and so peep from its secrecy through the flesh, how shall the nameless light not leap on man, and unknown powers emerge from nature's sleep.